This, this is Brisbane, 1984, 99, 2012, and now 2016. A lot has changed. tremendous growth which confronts us with many problems. New homes are springing up by the thousands for our rapidly growing population. Because we are an industrial nation, most of the people must live in urban areas. The growth of these regions presents one of the biggest challenges facing our nation. The problem of urban sprawl. That was Arthur Barr discussing the growth of urban sprawl for the town of Dearborn, Michigan in the 1960s, a topic that was on the global radar then and still is now. Some 50 years later, in the town of Brisbane, Australia, this issue is still ever-present, with detached homes and major highway infrastructure dominating our available greenfield land, which dubs the question, are we just building residential infrastructure so we can have more residential infrastructure? Let's take a step back. When cinema was born, only 14% of the world's population lived in cities. Right now, we're at 54%. And this is where we're headed. Now that's a huge deal when you think about it, because the resources that built the cities and the residential regions of the 20th century aren't sustainable today. Basically, we're doing damage to nature, and we do less damage to nature when we occupy less of it. In order to house this influx of people, the region will need the construction of 1.1 million detached homes, or alternatively, 1.3 million apartments. To put that into perspective, here's one eight-storey apartment in Brisbane, holding 248 residents. And here's the equivalent to housing an additional 2.6 million people. That's 10,500 eight-storey apartments. 10,500? 10, 10,500 eight-storey apartments, covering a mass of 42.74 kilometres. As the city population increases and urbanisation of the greater Brisbane region swells, a plethora of questions unfold. What is to become of the land on the fridges of Brisbane? What type of city will Brisbane become? Do we keep growing and expanding, chewing up our geomorphology, and isolating people in a landscape of homogeneity? A new life awaits you in the off-world colonies. The chance to begin again in a golden land of opportunity and adventure. With the absence of an integral vision of coordination and effective tools, urbanisation will prevail over low resistant territories, ultimately increasing our urban footprint. To begin the process of developing urban growth scenarios, South East Queensland and Brisbane in particular need to be appraised from a regional landscape perspective. The landscape itself will therefore form a basis from which future urban growth scenarios can formulate. When interrogated and studied, the landscape will be able to indicate limitations and opportunities for development that can render as a variety of forms that are more site-specific than cities that have analysed their changing landscapes as a hindrance to growth. The landscape conditions identified need to include layers of hydrology, wetland systems, current farmland that includes horticulture, transition land, cropping and grazing patches, current resource protection zones, nature conservation, parks and national parks are to be included, forestry production and plantation, existing soils that are characterised for their growth and development potentials, existing road and rail, existing developed land that includes mining, industrial, transport and communications, services and residential. And finally, development zones that are already being proposed for the future. The result of data collecting, mapping and projecting is a product of landscape urbanism. An incipient train of thought that makes the argument for shaping cities with a higher regard for their landscape conditions. Yeah. We gotta just bite the bullet on this thing. Yeah. So, uh, what's the next step here, Jerry? Through a method of scraping the land and saving its existing landscape conditions, we are left with this. Spaces of viable land to house the future population. This effectively builds on the land that is currently used for infrastructure without impeding a land associated with our natural environment. While these groupings span out across South East Queensland, this current proposal is only choosing to look at a unique cluster of sites in the centre of Brisbane. 
there are opportunities to explore other models in alternative sites. However, here's how Brisbane's new plan works. From the sieve process, it was determined that the spaces selected for development are within a one kilometre radius from existing rail infrastructure. The urban transformation areas most suitable for development include Indrapilly, West End, Seven Hills, Spring Hill and Windsor. A new rapid transport system creates an efficient loop for collective transit that builds on existing rail while also filling in the gaps that Brisbane currently neglects. A journey surrounding the CBD that has never been connected before via rail could now be completed in under 45 minutes. If we look at the new development areas as one urban mass, it would cover 15.5 square kilometres of new city. However, not quite as expansive as the 42.74 square kilometres previously stated. To capture the influx of population growth over the next 40 years, this new framework provides an armature for growth with dense new centres at transit nodes that wrap around Brisbane's heart. These centres drop in mass concentrically from their core at 32 floors down to their edges at 8 floors, building up a density that fluctuates over the landscape and is responsive to its future conditions. So here's the question. Can we put an end or even place a hindrance on urban sprawl by providing a framework that respects the constraints of ecology and geomorphology? Can this be achieved while still utilising the landscape as a mechanism that harbours growth? The scraping and sieving of the land in an informal composition leaves us with the space necessary for the intervention of our Cartesian grid. The structure hybridizes into the existing, creating a dynamic and rich city fabric. This new framework results in a proposition that is more open-ended and strategic than traditional planning, which is previously focused on anecdotes and diagrammatic interpretations. It's this unique understanding of landscape, milieu, time and place that cities around the globe need to grasp with both hands and take on board. Either that, we might end up seeing damage to our natural environment that we may never return from. I just can't imagine that, and the whole point of this video was to keep the conversation of South East Queensland's future alive by providing a method and strategy for development that puts the best intentions of the landscape first. Okay, I'm exhausted, I'm sure you're exhausted from watching this presentation, and I barely scratched the surface, but that's what I've got. So I'm going to leave you with this quote from the great Victor Hugo. The peculiarity of prudery is to multiple sentinels, in proportion as the fortress is less threatened. Basically, it's my understanding that Hugo was demonstrating that it's the distinct mindset of people within their personal bubbles and fortresses that have created the wasteful living conditions that are currently present. And it's the new city's role to remind us of how much we benefit from and actually desire to share physical space with other people while we live, work and play. In case I don't see ya. Good afternoon, good evening, and good night. <laughs> yeah.